since Ryan Miller and for the past 15 years have helped hundreds of people to raise millions of dollars for their funds and for their startups. If you're serious about raising money, launching your business, or taking your life to the next level, this show will give you the answers so that you too can enjoy your pursuit of making billions. Let's get into it. If you're like me, you understand that success is an inside job. So in this week's episode of Making Billions, I have one of my friends and most elite mental programmers in the world, William Lamb from Upgrade.com. William is going to walk you through a simple framework you can use today to realize quantum shifts with less effort. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to another episode of Making Billions. I'm your host, Ryan Miller, and today I have my dear friend, William Lamb. William is the founder and CEO of Upgrade.com. He specializes in mental programming for some of the most elite high performers in the world. Even after charging a million dollars to work with this guy, he still has a massive waiting list. And I'm fortunate enough to be one of those people who have studied under him. And I could tell you with certainty that this guy is the real deal. So what this means is William is the guy that some of the wealthiest people in the world call when they need to make quantum leaps in their life. So Will, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I must say, I'm a big fan, not only of you and of the show, but what you're doing here. And the people that are listening to the show, I think that they have not only found a gem in the sea of podcasts, they have found the show. So I'm very glad that I'm invited and honored to be here. You know, you're very kind. Thank you for that. And the honor is all mine. The stuff that you've been able to do, and you're going to want to hang in there in the end where Will's going to share with us some of the stuff that he charges people six, seven figures and more to work with him. He's going to be able to share some of these tips with us today. But before we get into that, maybe you can walk us through and, and just help me understand, like, how did you become an expert in this area? Oh, man, I'll make the long story short. It started with a crazy, crazy story. So my grandfather was kidnapped when he was married 10 days, he traveled to Southeast Asia to do business. Well, he was essentially taken by the island, well, the people of the island, and made a work slave. For 10 years, his family didn't know if he was alive or not. So imagine being married for 10 days and then being gone for 10 years. That was intense. So my grandmother started adopting kids, thinking that maybe he's totally gone, right? Because back then, if he couldn't write letters back, there was no way of really knowing anything. My grandfather and my grandmother both developed this belief, this unconscious belief that maybe you shouldn't get too close to your loved ones. Maybe you shouldn't be too intimate with people you do business with in, in a sense of like, you know, just being really connected and, and developing a good relationship. Because sometimes things just don't work out. And, and in my grandfather's situation, being gone for 10 years, think about the thoughts that, that brewed in his mind over those years and, and my grandmother too. So in their mind, they, they made a decision to not get too close with other people, whether it's romantic or platonic relationships or business relationships. And then further, they made a decision to not become an entrepreneur or a business owner anymore because I was too much risk to not be able to be with their family anymore. I observed my father trying to start a business here and there when I was growing up and noticed epic failures. At least that's what he calls it, right? And a lot of it had to do with basically following the, the beliefs and the programs from my grandparents of how those pursuits actually lead to, lead to the opposite of freedom and, and a lot of trauma. So I found myself 26 years old, at 26, 25 years old, um, that, you know, in your mid-20s, you're essentially pursuing a career. You're, you're looking for perhaps the ideal relationships. And I found myself broke and not even knowing what I, if I, what I was doing would lead me to where I want. I was in a very broken place. And at that moment, I thought, what if it's got less to do with my luck and with how hard I work, because I was working really hard, and or just circumstances. But it had a lot more to do with what's going on inside my mind, the, the mental programs inside of me. So that that was the beginning of my um, intrigue, and which then turned into an obsession, a desire to truly understand how to not only overcome those past ancestral programmings and let go of the, the traumas and the limitations, but to modify beliefs and install new ones that truly allow me to free myself and unlock my mind and do the same for others. Wow. And so obviously the best person to convert is yourself. A lot of us have been that way. And so that study led you down a road where you were curious about human behavior. How did that lead you that that research on because you went down the rabbit hole, man, deeper than anybody I've ever met in my life. So you go down this rabbit hole, you're learning different techniques and all these things. And, you know, I would refer to you as more of like um, a, a programmer, almost like you're a mental programmer more than like this. is This isn't therapy, folks. I mean, that, there's nothing wrong with that. That's great stuff, too. But what Wheels do, does is a little bit different as far as almost programming that computer we call the brain. So going down that rabbit hole, Will, I'm wondering if you can just uh, open up a little bit of like, what are you up to now? How did that lead you to create Upgrade? Maybe just walk us through uh, all, all the good stuff you're up to today. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. I, I love the question that you just asked because I don't think a lot of people would, would be able to observe and really see what you just mentioned, what you just observed. We really are programmers more so than anything else because I look at the world and, and you know, the team that we've trained and the uh, some of the students I've gone through are 
our programming course, they have learned to perceive the world differently, where the world is more codes rather than just, oh, this is a good event, this is a bad event, and, and oh, woe is me, right? And there, in this world nowadays, I think there are a lot of victim mind, mindset, victim mentality. At the same time, if someone's in that space or in that situation, for someone who identifies a victim, they oftentimes don't have the tools or the perception of the tools to be able to get themselves out. And in my opinion, I think a lot of, a lot of the problems in the world really is more of a programming error or a, a problem in the codes rather than anything else. So I became really obsessed, as I mentioned before, but it, it began with this really unique situation. So I went to one of the very first mental programming trainings. In fact, it wasn't anything super advanced. It's a comprehensive, but very basic type of trainings about the mind and the behaviors. I remember being asked this question, what's the one thing that when you achieve it because of these trainings will make this the single best, single most powerful investment you've ever made? And I thought to myself, I want to say money, but money's never really solved any of my problems. It seems like it's just at that point, right? To me, I was not nearly as knowledgeable as, uh, you know, over the years that we've gained knowledge. I, I remember still thinking money is a magnifier. So if my mind is messed up or have issues and problems. I'll just frankly repeat bigger problems if I had more money or less money. Either way, I thought I need to resolve this. It's something in my mind. And my mind actually came up with an answer that I was not expecting. As I responded to my instructor in that training, I said, I would like to find the one relationship that I want. Find the one romantic relationship. And they, they without hesitation said, when? My response, it just slipped out of my mouth. Five months. That was five months. And four and a half months later, I was engaged. Now, this is, this is interesting because as I was designing this person and the situation and everything, I had written over 83 attributes on a spreadsheet, prioritized the rows and columns. I designed a, a, essentially a, a engineering spec sheet for my reality. And when I found out after that she actually broke up with her fiance the day or the weekend, I set the goal and made the design. I thought, wow, okay, what are the odds? I think I found a gold mine if I can repeat this, if I could replicate this. So then my obsession grew, right? In the beginning, it was just curiosity. I'm like, what if this is a coincidence? Well, there's only one way to find out. Can I replicate? And, and look, it's not just designing. It was designing and then focusing on it. And then as you focus on it, I, I began to modify my beliefs that did not support that new design of my reality and install beliefs that would. And that's, that's where the training really was important because I understood the foundation of how a belief is set up and how it's installed or removed or reprogrammed. Long story short, I then took massive action, right? So those steps, which we can talk about later, I followed and I repeated it for designing my ideal client. And I designed someone who would be very knowledgeable, very, very interested in the workings of the mind. And I even set parameters um, of different kinds. And, you know, just, oh, this is, this is a person who makes a certain amount of money, a real estate investor. At that point, our majority uh, of my design was real estate investor or majority of our clients were. But uh, even though nowadays we have a lot more private equity, venture capital and um, tech entrepreneurs and even athletes, that's, that's another story. So anyway, I designed this gentleman and I also wrote someone who's really good at giving referrals, who would tell the world about me and my service. My first client had a PhD in psychology and also real estate investor, has a massive network. I helped him hit his goal in five months and very quickly he started to refer me people. And I got over $800,000 worth of client referral payments. And that's pretty awesome because that was my first client. And I thought, wow, if I could design the one and I designed the first client and it was a repeatable process, I got to be able to do it a third time, a fourth time, a hundredth time and beyond. What a what a, an awesome experience. So you're writing this out. Um, you're very clear on what you want. You take massive action to do that. You adjust your mind and in the pursuit and things start to come together precisely on what you planned. That's a little taste of some of the stuff that Will gets uh, myself and all the others included. If you remember that one time we talked about even my own income, for example, you could talk about love life, income, anything that matters to you um, that leads to a positive outcome. I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but if you're following this show, you understand that success is an inside job. We do that. We follow that doctor and I follow that the rest of my life. And when I met Will, all of those things clicked. You know, one of those things is investment fund managers, just that personality, even entrepreneurs, the same personality is we really go for it. And we push hard. I remember when we first met and I you were started asking me the goals. I don't even know what was happening. This Will guy was, he was working me from the beginning. And I'm very glad that you did. And one of those things was 5Xing my monthly income. 
and you just did your math. I think it was over dinner and we just you did your thing. It was so easy for you and so profound for me of some of the stuff that we got into. I couldn't believe it. And then folks, literally in a few months, I 5X my income exactly following Will's instruction. So that's just one example. Will's worked with private equity people, venture capitalists, real estate investors, professional athletes. They are phenomenal people that are absolutely kicking butt. And if they won't tell you, but I will tell you on the show when it's not recording, here's the secret. They all admit that Will's their secret weapon, including myself. So getting someone like this who helps you to stay clear on what you want. See, too often we get caught up in execute, execute, execute. And that is important up to a point where then you have law of diminishing returns. And so what Will helps us with is getting our vision, our efforts, our thoughts, our emotions, all of these things in place. Now, I don't want to give up all the secret sauce uh, or even misrepresent because you're the guy that that has uh, all the clientele. But I'm wondering, you know, based off of that, all of these things that you've done, I'm wondering if you can summarize a little bit of your methodology for our people here. This is this is the million dollar stuff. I'm wondering if you could outline three or four things for our clients around the world that you find most helpful now that you've been doing this for, for almost a decade. Oh man, thank you for your kind words. I, I think that uh, we've been the fortunate one to have worked with these wonderful people, the movers and the shakers of the world. Uh, one thing I must say is that in the beginning, I thought, what if I could live a thousand lives? If I could help a thousand people, then I would have lived a thousand lives. I can learn from their failures or whatever they perceive as failures and help them reprogram their beliefs, their values, their even their identity and, and their behaviors so that I can learn from whatever they call failure and how they transition into success and how they transition from success to even greater success and beyond and establishing patterns because patterns really don't lie. And so during this process, we begin to develop not just apps, and I don't mean it in a literal sense yet. I mean it very metaphorically. We begin to build formulas. We begin to build algorithm and even what, what I'm saying call apps. But really, ultimately, I wanted to build an operating system for the human mind that allows for predictable and consistent outcome that transforms how someone interacts with their mind. Because most people have no guidebook or no user's manual to their brain or their mind. They're just doing the best they can, hopefully getting what they want. And that's why life is very unpredictable, even for the most successful. I will say, you know, we don't just have the million dollar program. You know, we have, we have anything, frankly, from a hundred dollar to a million plus. And, um, our newest private training coaching program is actually two million dollars. And then we, we have a program that's a hundred dollars. But the most popular program that we have is actually our 20 and 30 and 50 K program. Those three. I do love your question. So I'm going to answer it from the perspective of our 20 K program where what is the four, what are the four simple steps that one begins with when they enter into our training and when they enter into this new world of optimization of their mind? The first step is actually designing. As I sort of shared in my story, if you begin to design what you want, which most people, if you ask them what they want, they'll tell you either what they need or what they don't want. In fact, I had a client call me one time and he said, William, I really want this one car, but I don't need it. I'm like, and he said, well, my wife and my neighbors are talking about it and none of them support my decision or, or my desire. I'm like, okay, if you tell me what you want, then what is it that you need? He's like, oh, my current car is fine. I'm like, cool. If you tell your yourself and me and, and the world what you want and, and you know what you want, right? He's like, yeah. And then you go about doing what you need. You're training your mind to ignore what you want and staying within what you need. How many of us have been told when we were kids going to the store and our parents are like, you don't need that. We do that to ourselves nowadays, right? So this gentleman was doing the exact same thing. Yet I pointed out, if you know what you want, but you continuously train your mind to do what you need, your mind will ignore what you want. And over time, you will become desensitized to what you really want, suppressed. I asked him, what if you go for what you want and your mind begins to give you other things that you really want? For example, if you want a million dollar extra in your income, but all you really need is maybe a hundred grand over or a hundred grand extra. If you train your mind to give you what you want, your mind will then begin to give you more likely that million rather than that 100K. As I explained this to him, he went ahead and bought the car he wanted. Now, I'm not, I don't tell people what to do. Yet after he did that, he actually hit his goal that he set with us. And he was, he was actually our first client. And then he then referred me over $800,000 worth of other referrals. And this story simply illustrates to me and those who have heard this story, the key is designing what you want. And as you do that, you need to know what you want and you need to saturate your mind with what you want. And my recommendation is write down a hundred things and a hundred experiences that you really want. By the end of this podcast, Ryan, if you're okay with this, I would love to give the audience a gift. And that gift will actually give everyone more detailed instructions on how to design what they want. And remember this, if we were to design what you want, you need to know what you want. Because then once you know what you want, you design the details, you design the pixels. There's nothing unrealistic in this world. 
the things that we perceive as unrealistic are the things that we do not have the little pixels for. We can't make them real in our mind. Therefore, we deem them unrealistic. So in this first step, as you design what you want, keep in mind, design the details. And then remember, you need to tip the balance of thinking about what you need and what you what you don't want versus what you really want. And if you can get get heavier and, and spend more time, invest more of your energy focusing on what you want rather than just what you need and or worse, what you don't want, then your mind, remember this, what you play on the stage of your mind is a preview of coming attraction. Hmm. Your mind would then begin to produce and bring in and filter in the things that you desire. Man, that is brilliant. And if I could be a little vulnerable, I did this with Will and I... When, as many of you know, I was a CFO before in a former life. So to give you an idea of my personality and how I operate, it's very thorough and, and detail oriented. So I planned out those hundred things that I wanted, a hundred experiences. And that, that shouldn't take you too long. In fact, it, it took me longer because I didn't even know a hundred things. How crazy was that? And I started looking it up. But what I did then is I actually went on and I planned out, okay, here's a vehicle I want. These are the beautiful experiences I want with my family. I figured out what does it cost? You want to own your own jet? What does that cost? How much is fuel? Uh, what's the insurance cost? All of these things. What size of house? You got? You want 12 cars? Where are you going to store them? You need a 12 car garage? Okay, great. What are the property taxes in this area? So I literally did full economic and detailed analysis. Now, I'm not saying Will recommended that I do that, but he is saying understand it to a very very precise detail. That's the point. For me, that's how I achieve that. But many people will figure out the details in their own way. But the point is, I think Will is saying is really take this serious, really take this serious. There's a reason why people with a billion dollar AUM hire Will to work with him directly because he gets rid of all of the ambiguity and gets you very clear on the outcomes that you're after, but not just what they are, but he gets you into how. And I would say these are one of the things, Will, that you and the company you've built, Upgrade.com, that's one of the big differences between you and maybe the other gurus out there is that you very much focus on action and on how and why. Would you agree? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, we, we certainly are programmers. And when it comes to programming, we're interested in precise steps rather than saying, hey, work harder or think bigger. You know, you deserve it, which are common themes amongst many other common themes from the Old gurus. And look, they're, they're wonderful. There are many that have taught me tons and that probably many of you have learned many, many wonderful things. The challenge is many people still don't know how. And that's one of the most asked questions. How, how, how? So my goal and mission is to reveal the how to give people the, the steps and the precise instructions on how to configure their mind to really become the ultimate version. And I think that if people were to know really how capable they are, I, I have this metaphor, I, I think that would illustrate a little bit, if I may. Please. Yeah? Imagine if I, if I told you, I have this undisclosed brand of this high-end undisclosed car in my garage. I'm not going to tell you how much it's worth or how much it costs. Now, let's say I have another car. And, and look, there's nothing wrong with any, you know, any of these brands I mention or don't mention. I'm just going to use it as an example. But let's say you have a Ford pickup truck from the 80s. It's kind of beat up. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to fix it up. I'm going to give it to you for free. And on top of it, we'll take care of maintenance and stuff for the next 10 years. However, if you pick that car, this first car that we mentioned, you would have to give up the opportunity of ever having it. You don't know what this car is. You don't know what it can do. It may be amazing. It may not be. Now I'm saying, you know, this is an old pickup truck that we fix up. Mm -hmm. So some people may say, I'll take the risk. Some people may say, I won't, right? And then probably a lot of people might be like, I actually need a car right now and I can't risk getting a bicycle. But let's just say I'm going to up, up the game a little bit. And, and trust me, this, this will illustrate something I think quite useful. Let's say we give you a, a Honda, very reliable, a Honda Accord, brand new, and it has all the features. It's, you know, a $35,000 Honda. And we're like, we'll also take care of maintenance and, and service for the next 10 years. Would you most likely pick that Honda rather than a mysterious unknown? For sure. If it's even a fee, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Bird in the hand, as they say. But what if I then, after someone accepts the Honda, I open the garage and it's a brand new Ferrari. Now, I think that most people have no idea that they have a Ferrari in their garage. Most people have no idea how capable their mind really is. And they settle for they settle for what they've been told that they're able to do or that they settle for what their employers or their boss or their their teachers or their parents or grandparents or society or media tells them hey you you know if you work hard enough you'll be able to do this and this and this and this and even amongst the top performers many of them still they have sacrificed a lot they've pushed themselves hard they've worked really hard 
but they never realize inside of their mind there is a Ferrari and they never used it, or they never used it to the degree and the level that they could. Man, that's brilliant. So, and uh, I actually do know what you have in your garage. So that's that's a good good analogy, especially for you. So really helping people to understand what is in their mind. That's that's the whole thing is really understanding the the potential. And I think most people have tried everything that they understand in their conscious mind, and then they go to you. And they, they say, what am I missing? And then you, you take, uh, as you did with me and many others, a, a nice little journey down the subconscious to figure out what are some of those, if there are any blockers or is there anything that can help promote it to go in faster and achieve their goal? So what are some other things um, that you found that have helped people, particularly in the investment fund space or venture capital startups like this world? What are some of those uh, other things that you found to be most helpful? Well, first off, I would say... Uh focus, the focus of their mind. Mm. When someone has designed what they want, especially in the investment community, there's always changes in the marketplace. Yeah. There's always changes in the attitude of the investors or of the people who invest money into your funds, clients, partners. And their attitude changed not only because of the marketplace, but what happens in their personal life. So as someone who's maybe a fund manager who's listening, or maybe you yourself are an investor, or maybe you have a massive portfolio, or maybe you manage a family office or, or whatever it is that you do. I know that a lot of times, even though these things outside of you will change, but if you remain focused on your design and you stay committed to it, you'll begin to discover that your mind, this whole, the, the metaphor I previously gave about the Ferrari and the Honda, I'll be, I'll be real clear here. It's actually the same car, but, and, and some of you are like, what are you talking about? It's not the same car. Your mind can function like a Ferrari, but you've been told that it can only function like a Honda. So imagine if you had a Ferrari and you have been lied to and that you've been told and you've been conditioned and programmed to believe that this is actually a Honda. You'd be like, oh my gosh, this whole time I could unleash this massively awesome, beautiful, powerful car, but I haven't. See, what we cannot do, we try to compensate it with the physical effort. What we cannot do in our mind, until we learn to do those things in our mind, we will always have to put a lot of physical effort into things. And the thing that we need to learn how to do in the mind actually begins with designing what you want and then focusing on the design. So to be even more specific, when faced with challenges, whether it's from partners, marketplace, or clients, you must notice that how you continue to stay focused on the ideal outcome is one of the most important things you can do. Instead of being worried or anxious, because think about this, anytime we feel worried or anxious, we're actually focusing on what we don't want. And when we focus on what we don't want, we're giving our, our mind, our unconscious, the next step instruction. And the next step instruction, if what we display in our mind is what we don't want, then the unconscious mind will then begin to perform the behaviors that lead to the things you don't want. So if you can't control your focus, you can work super hard and you achieve perhaps a great height, great level of success. But at one point or another, you're going to feel burned out. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel stress beyond belief. And you're going to be like, man, why is this so hard? I just want to go meditate. I just want to go take a vacation. But if you learn how to stay focused on what you want, what you experience is instead of pain versus pleasure, you experience a world where it's pleasure or more pleasure. Brilliant. One of the things I get asked for, because I'm, you know, I'm doing this fund and I'm coaching other people to do it and I sit on boards and I'm running the show and I'm doing it and I got a family and all these things. And everyone's like, dude, you're crazy. Like, how are you doing all this stuff? And, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, how? It's because I work with Will. That is how. So working with Will, imagine if you achieve a place in your life on the inside where your thoughts, your actions, your feelings, your beliefs, and even dare I say your identity are perfectly aligned to getting what you want. This is, a, you've heard Will talk about this because it's important. That's why he's spending so much time with us on here. He's a busy guy. In aligning all of those behaviors. See, too often we'll, we'll say, I know what I want, but I don't think I could do it because I was raised this way and no one in my family, da, da, da. And you have these weird beliefs or this weird identity. I mean, where, where from your experience, Will, maybe you can talk a little bit about what role do beliefs, identities, all of that stuff, how does that fit into helping people achieve these massive quantum leaps? Thank you for asking that. I think that um, especially in, in, in the minds of the audience that listen to this show, Making Billions, I think a lot of people probably have noticed that their beliefs and, and their values, which is what's important to them, and, and also their identity, plays a big role in whether it limits them or propels them into new heights of success. Well, I'll break it down for the audience because one of the most important understandings in being able to program the mind begins with understanding what actually makes up a belief. What is the makeup of a belief or the components or the parts? So every belief has at least two parts, and there's part A and part B. Part A is whatever it is. Maybe, you know, someone says, I'm short. 
And then part B will be like, I'm not successful. And if you were to connect them in a belief, you would either put an equal sign or a cost and effect sign. Well, equal sign then would say, I am short, therefore I'm not successful. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous because that's not actually true. However, if someone decides to put an equal sign between A and B, then in their world, that becomes true. And that belief gets tucked in amongst other beliefs and they form clusters of beliefs that oftentimes support one another. And then we call it a value. Value is essentially what's important to us. And it's, a, it's also a cluster or clusters of beliefs. Then when values are formed and they form around other values that are like it, and that clusters or cluster of belief or, or cluster of value, that cluster of value becomes your identity. So your identity is essentially a collection of clusters of values, which are clusters of beliefs. And these all lead to our many, many behaviors that we have and our many, many micro behaviors that we have. That's how a human operating system is organized and in every human. So if you go to a training and you modify a belief here and there, you'll notice belief change and of course, behavioral change. But if you don't modify or optimize the environment that that belief sits in, you'll notice your belief will revert Hmm. and then you have to go back to more training. And that's a model that's been run for decades to keep you going to more events, which is fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that because some people still break through big time and have massive success from it. However, I think that the new age, the new era, the next level when it comes to truly effective and efficient mental change or belief change is when you change values and identity, therefore creating a cascading effect across your entire operating system, allowing all of your beliefs to align with your values and your identity, and therefore your behaviors are congruent. So now imagine instead of wanting to become a billionaire, as let's say you're a millionaire, if you're like, I want to be a billionaire, I want to make billions, instead of I believe I can be a billionaire. I believe I can close this deal. Instead, you identify as a billionaire and you make what is important to other billionaires because we have these data that are aggregated from other people who are doing that. You install the values that actually make a billionaire a billionaire in your unconscious and then install the proper beliefs. Your entire mental environment becomes not only the perfect place for you to become a billionaire, but also it's very self-supporting and it's very automated and it becomes a congruent environment and your behaviors will display that rather than fighting and having conflict and having that grind, that incredible struggle, that fighting and that struggle comes from the internal world not being congruent. And the flip side is you're going to be able to save a lot of time when you're able to make it congruent. You're going to save a lot of time, energy, effort as you go on your path of creating massive success for yourself. That dude, that is brilliant. And you know what Will's talking about here, as awesome as this is, and his stuff will help in any area in your life, he goes down with you in this area. So, you know, and I do a lot of this. So people ask my advice, whether I'm coaching somebody, mentoring, advisory, whatever that is, but more particularly in raising capital. See, raising capital is all about taking someone who sees the world in one way and showing them a new possibility. And one of the best ways for, because we know we got fund managers, investment bankers, and entrepreneurs, and every one of those categories, myself included, all needs to raise money. So doing that and working with someone else, often what I found when I help people to make a breakthrough, whether that is investing in in my stuff or uh, coaching and helping them in their own, it goes exactly what Will talked about. And so when you pitch and align your opportunity or whatever that might be, and you help them to align to their higher beliefs, right? They're more refined beliefs, maybe the beliefs they wish they believed, which sounds funny. You believe you wish you believe something else. So all of those things you're saying, you know, I wish I was this kind of a person, right? I was, wish I was the kind of person who's the life of the party, or maybe I'm, I'm too much of the life of the party. I wish I was more calm, whatever that is. Aligning your opportunity, starting with yourself, but then also other people that you have to work with, whether that's a spouse in the boardroom, investors, aligning that with your your beliefs, your value or their beliefs, their values, their identity to your opportunity and showing them how your opportunity confirms their highest refinement of beliefs, their highest refinement of identity and values and say, through this opportunity, you could become a billionaire to use the example that you use, Will. Through this opportunity, you'd be able to retire in five years or less and spend time with your children because that's who they are. They're a family man or family woman. All of these things, aligning yourself with their beliefs, their values, their identity creates massive power. But I left one thing and I'd love for you to speak on it. It's cool to have the best beliefs. You could believe you're going to be this amazing billionaire. You can have the best values that just lock you into certain behaviors and ideas. And you can even have this great identity, but that's not enough, is it? There's still one remaining thing. Once you have that, you need to plow all of that into taking massive action. And that's where the that's where the rubber hits the road. Maybe you can speak a little bit on how your philosophy on helping billionaires to become even more high performers, and that's not just in money, that could be their family or whatever it might be. After we've walked all that up, 
What is the role of taking massive action? Absolutely. The, to connect this last point, taking massive action, I think one, one can look at where in their life they've taken massive action and where in their life they haven't taken massive action. That's where I would begin. Oftentimes, the mysteries and the massive success lies within the areas we haven't considered that we could take bigger or massive actions in. Because the greatest limitations that we face oftentimes aren't found in the things we want to do but can't do. They're found in the things we never considered doing. So taking massive action doesn't mean the same old conventional, your familiar old path of taking more action by working more physically. What I would encourage people to consider is now that they've designed what they want and they know how to focus on it, right? They actually focus on playing the ideal scenario out in every situation in their mind. And then they modify their beliefs, their, their, they optimize their values and identity to fit that, right? Instead of believing I'm short, therefore I can't be successful, you can actually, and this doesn't even have to make any sense. Many beliefs have make zero sense logically. You can say I'm short, therefore I am either going to be successful or even more successful because of whatever reason you want. And you can put a cost and effect in there. And of course, in our in our training, we actually break down how, when we talk about, uh, we have a training called Sales Scott, and it's the ultimate training on management, persuasion, and influence. In that training, we talk about how to actually create that change in the belief system and how to create that change in the value system, how to create that change in your in someone's identity and, and be able to get someone to a point where a client identifies with you. Therefore, they, they identify as a client of yours and they identify as someone who will constantly buy from you. All of that can be installed, yet it requires you to put in action. And once again, the action does not have to be physically driven only type of activity. It, it's, it needs to be work on your mind and work on your emotions. It work and also work on your values and identity. Because when you begin to modify that, the inner game becomes mass, you become the master of your inner game. And you'll find that the external world is simply a projection. If I may put it this way, I'll, I'll use a metaphor to explain this relationship between our mind and our phys physical reality. Imagine if we had a projector, a laptop, and a projector screen, and even a generator. And we all go on a trip to the 1800, a time machine trip. Yeah, we, we take a time machine, we go to the 1800s. We pull out the generator, the laptop, projector, projector screen. We set it up in town square somewhere, somewhere in old Europe. We're showing people in town. And some people are like, whoa, these people are not to be, you know, talked to or with. They're, uh, they're, you know, they're working some sort of sorcery over there. This is not allowed here. Some people will be like, whoa, are they prophets? What is happening? Let's say we yelled and we say, hey, look, anyone who knows how to change what's on the projector screen, come over. And if you can show us how you do it and you're able to do it successfully, this whole setup is yours and we'll disappear from here. So there's actually a line of people that are like, I want to try. I want to see what happens. Guess where they all go? The projector screen. Because they don't know what the heck that projector or the laptop or the generator, they, they don't know what that, that does. But what they see is the screen has the image or the moving picture. And so when they go and change it or try to move things around, they couldn't. They find that the projector and the, the laptop actually seems to have something to do with the picture, but they can't figure out how. Well, here's the thing. Most humans don't know that what is going on in their reality is like that projector screen, that reality that we call reality, this physical reality, is what we called the projector screen. And this projector screen, if we want to change what's on it, the fastest way to change it is actually going to the laptop, going to the laptop, not the screen. That within that same metaphor, many people, whether you're highly successful or a beginner investor or everything in between, many of us still think I need to go change and put in physical effort to change what's on the screen. Yes, it's still possible to change what's on the screen, what's in the physical reality using physical force, physical effort. However, the codes behind the creation of our reality lies within our minds. So when we begin to modify what's on the laptop, that's the least amount of effort. That's the fastest amount of time you can utilize your, your resources to create change in the physical. Start in your mind. Man, that is brilliant. So beliefs, values, identity, and action. That is brilliant. So before we move on, is there anything else you would like our fans to know before we wrap up? Uh, you know, I'd say one of the most important things about our mind is that it's not finite. And many of us think in a way that is very binary, right or wrong, yes or no. But our mind functions in a very quantum and nonlinear way. And so if people begin to understand that growth as we unlock and as we optimize our mind is not a linear path, it's not a yes, I'm going to be all of a sudden successful. In fact, it's more of a quantum leap. When we optimize our minds, it can be one of the most magical experiences because when you truly find that your mind is quantum in nature, and perhaps it's an overused word, but when you do understand what quantum means, you can consider all of the infinite possibilities all at once. You'll find that you could also live a thousand lives by taking this new growth, this new path 
there's a new trajectory. So simply put, I think that if people allow themselves to envision, to imagine, what if I could become the ultimate, most powerful version of me? How much would it be worth? How much would it be worth investing into my mind, right? Now, the good news is I think that I've never given this to any other podcast, but I think that this audience knows how to appreciate true value and that they can, they're can they committed individuals who know how to take massive action. So if I were to give this gift to your audience, I think that people would find themselves being able to use it and gain great value out of it. And, and really, I think it only the most intelligent people will find the most value out of the tools that we share. So I think that is very fitting for this audience. So anyone who finds the link from this podcast that we share, you'll be able to find uh, the gift within this, this link. Uh, you'll be able to access one of our programs completely free for a certain amount of time, but it's completely free. Go around, play with it, learn. And it's, I think it's going to give you not only a new focus and teach you how to design what you want, but also show you the importance. We've actually run case study on this with our science team, how important it is to stay focused as you continue to create what you want. And then what kind of change can I do? What kind of, what kind of internal work can I do to modify my beliefs and, and values and even identity? And it's a 30 day journey. So if you will stay with us during those 30 days, I think you're going to notice transformation. Now, it's not an expensive program. It's truly a program that introduces what Upgrade is and also give you real values. If you will stick through it, I think you'll find very pleasurable outcome. Very, very magnificent outcome. Yeah, I love that. That's very generous of you. So we'll put the link in the description below. You know, just to summarize, design what you want, not just what you need. Ensure that your actions are oriented toward getting what you want. Uh, it's much better than just going for what you just need. Adjusting your limiting beliefs just to see new possibilities. And finally, be committed to taking massive action to get what you want. You do these things and you too will be well on your way in your pursuit of making billions. Wow, what a show. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Now, if you haven't done so already, be sure to leave a comment and review on new ideas and guests you want me to bring on for future episodes. Plus, why don't you head over to YouTube and see extra takes while you get to know our guests even better. And make sure to come back for our next episode where we dive even deeper into the people, the process, and the perspectives of both investors and founders. Until then, my friends, stay hungry, focus on your goals, and keep grinding towards your dream of making billions.